My name is Ruben Rodriguez. I am a husband, father, musician, high school teacher, and I'm Comanche. I ride with the Res Riders Indian Motorcycle Club. Some know me as Music Man. So when I was in uh, third grade living in National City, we had an assembly with the San Diego Orchestra. And they came, and there was just a youth orchestra, and they came and uh, they warmed up with Jaws, the theme song from Jaws. And from that moment on, I was hooked. I had to, I had to get involved. I had to, I had to learn. I had to get involved in music in some way. And I come from a very non-musical family. Um, no one in my family are musicians. No one plays an instrument. Um, people have dabbled in them, but no one's actually devoted any serious time to them. So that was my initial, um, my initial introduction into, into what music is. And that was my first live performance in front of me, was seeing that elementary concert. I play a lot of instruments. Um, I get kind of stir crazy. So I like to, you know, other than just mainly on the bass, I like to pick up different instruments. So one instrument I picked up was the, actually the Native American flute, um, the Indian flute. And so I'm actually Indian. Um, a lot of people see my name, my last name Rodriguez and automatically assume I'm Mexican. And uh, I even did. I didn't find out till sixth grade that I was not Mexican at all, actually, that I was Indian, um, Comanche. And so it was funny because in high school, people would still pick me first at soccer. And I'm like, dude, I can't play, man. Rodriguez is, I'm not Mexican. I can't play. And it's so I wish I could, but I couldn't. And so, um, yeah, so I, I'm actually Indian. So I picked up the Indian flute. And what's interesting about that instrument is you can't find instructions on how to play it. It's something that's passed down. It's, um, it's something that tribes like to pass down through spoken word. And so they will teach you how to play it. There's no book on this is how you play it. Um, every tribe, every region has their own Indian flute. And so, you know, my tribe is from the plains. So I made sure to, I picked up an Indian flute that was more indigenous to the Comanche tribe. And so as I learned to play that and speak with people about it, and I was part of like the San Diego flute circle for a bit and um, just gathering my information about it. But mostly it was just me spending time with the instrument and spending time with it. And it's really cool because that's an instrument that I could pass on to my kids. Like my oldest daughter, she plays the Indian flute also. I bought her her first one and so now she plays it. I was able to just sit with her and pass on what I know of it and what I learned from it onto her. And so that's something that can be, that can be passed down through our family and we can restart those traditions. Um, you know, back, you know, back when my grandfather was alive, you know, and he was a kid, he was never able to speak about his background. And that's how our language and our culture kind of got lost within my family, um, is, is that they, they didn't want that brought up. Um, so we just were happy just being recognized as Mexican and we just stayed with that. Um, and so when I found out about my background, I really just dove into it and dove into the music of it. Um, there's something about the sound of an Indian drum at a powwow. Um, if you've ever been to a powwow, that's what you'll hear is just six Indians around a big drum beating the living snot out of it. And it sounds like heaven. It just sounds amazing. And it just, it just, it gets internal in you. It just, it, it resonates in your core. Just that thumping, it's, it's, you can feel it from your feet all the way up through the top of your head. And, um, and that really spoke to me. My first pow I went to was when I was a student at Cal San Marcos. And I just remember being in the music, in the music building and hearing just that thump, thump, thump. And I'm like, we don't have a drum line. What, what is that? And I look out and I just see a bunch of Indians gathered and they were in full regalia, just fully dressed. And I was, I was like 19, 20. And I was just like enamored by it. I couldn't believe it. And I just made my way over there and I was just blown away by it. And I knew I just had to be a part of it. And I, that was those early powwows was when I first saw just, there was a really good club around that does a lot of good for, for indigenous people we called the Res Riders. And, and I knew I had to be a part of it. But problem was, was I didn't ride a motorcycle. I didn't own a motorcycle. Um, my mom banned me from having a motorcycle. Um, and my wife, banned me from having a motorcycle as well. And so it wasn't until recently, about three years ago, where I finally got my first motorcycle and I was so invested in it that I bought it before I even knew how to ride it. And so Harley had to tow it home and I couldn't even ride it out of the dealership. 
I didn't even have my permit, nothing. I didn't even know how to drive a stick shift. And so I took a class and I got my license and I was boom, I was riding. And after putting around, I still keep seeing this club around and seeing what they were doing in the community. And so I immediately, right away, I wanted to join the Res Riders. I wanted to, to be an influence in that community like it was an influence to some of my kids in the music community. I wanted to do that with the indigenous people, with the, with the natives, with the local natives here. And the cool thing about being a part of the Res Riders as I am, is I'm able to get onto the different powwows, I'm able to go onto the different reservations and just be, and just, just be used and, and be of service and of help to them um, for whatever they need. Um, we're able to, to bring shoes to the non-gaming tribes. We're able to, you know, pour into the communities. We're able to help out, you know, mothers who are, you know, escaping bad situations. We're able to do escorts for, for natives who have passed away and um, we're able to escort their bodies back onto the reservations from the mortuary. It's, it's been a lot of good in the community and it's, it's great because I can still pour into the kids but in a different way. You know, not only am I able to pour into them musically, but also just through our service and through seeing, hey, you know, just because we ride a Harley and we're wearing our cuts doesn't mean we're bad guys at all. We want to serve you, we want to help you, and that's what our club is all about. And it's great because we actually have a, a, a kid who's going to be coming a member. He's going through the process and he as a kid remembers his father being a res rider and just what we've done in the community and the service that we've provided. And it's, it's just great to see like that being passed on and, and my kids being able to see that in me and being able to see what good our club does. And, you know, and they have eyes for it later on down their life. You know, if if they're led to riding a Harley and riding a motorcycle, and so it's just been, it's been an amazing opportunity being able to fuse um, not only my music but my culture with you know being able to reach out to the youth or, or with my own kids. You know, my own kids see they go to powwows with me all the time, so they get to see that side of our family that was untouched and untalked about for I can't tell you how many years. And that's been really great for my kids because now they're gonna be able to start passing it down to their children and to their children's children. So that's been really great.